Part of what we do in audiovisual is we connect loudspeakers to power amplifiers. And we need to predict, in other words, calculate the loudspeaker load as presented to the output of the power amplifier to make sure that we're within the power amplifier specifications. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can wire up loudspeakers. We can wire them in a series configuration, or we can wire them in a parallel configuration. This is the same as just electronic circuits. We just happen to be using loudspeakers because that's what we do. So let's take the top example here. I have four loudspeakers, and they are all 8 ohms, and they are wired in a series configuration. In a series configuration, the impedance here is just simply additive. So it's going to be 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. We would know that as 32 ohms worth of impedance as presented to the power amplifier. That's one way to do it. Let's take those same four loudspeakers, and now let's wire them together in a parallel configuration. Here, and each of these, again, are 8 ohms, so all four of them are 8 ohms. If the impedance is all the same, and that's the case here because they're all 8 ohms, I can use a very short little formula. The impedance total, ZT, equals the impedance of one of those loudspeakers, which is going to be 8 ohms, divided by the number of loudspeakers that I'm wiring together in parallel. In this particular case, I'm wiring four of these loudspeakers together in parallel. So the impedance of one divided by the number that I'm wiring together in parallel. Eight divided by four, the total impedance as presented to the power amplifier would be in the neighborhood of two ohms. Is this a problem? Well, it depends on the power amplifier. We see power amplifiers that are rated for 16 ohms, eight ohms, four ohms, not all power amplifiers are rated for 2 ohms. Okay, so maybe that's a problem. What else can we do? Well, we could wire any combination of both series and parallel. In this particular case, I've got 8 loudspeakers, and let's say all of these are 8 ohms. So we're still dealing with 8 ohm loudspeakers. So this is a combination series and parallel circuit. How do I calculate this? Well, what we're going to do when we have this is we are going to calculate the series portions first. And as we looked at a moment ago, when we do a series circuit, it's just simply additive. So I have four 8 ohm loudspeakers. That is a total of 32 ohms in that particular part of the circuit. Another four group of four 8 ohm loudspeakers. Again, 32 ohms in that part of the circuit. This is the electrical equivalent of wiring together two 32 ohm loudspeakers together in parallel. So now we can use the formula that we talked about a moment ago. The impedance total equals the impedance of one, in this particular case that's going to be 32, divided by the number I'm wiring together in parallel. In this case it's going to be two. So the impedance total, if I wire this together as presented to the output of the power amplifier, would be 16 ohms worth of impedance. A moment ago we saw it was very easy when all of the loudspeakers were of the same impedance and we wired a bunch together in parallel. Very easy to figure out. We said the impedance total equaled the number, I'm sorry, the impedance of one of the loudspeakers, so the impedance of one of the loudspeakers, divided by the number we were wiring together in parallel. Real easy to figure out. But if what, what if we do something a little different? What if we're wiring loudspeakers of a differing impedance? Well, let's see. Let's wire together one of 16 ohms, one of 8 ohms, one of 4 ohms. How do I figure that out? We're going to use the reciprocal formula to calculate this. That says the impedance total equals 1 over 1 over the impedance of the first, so we can say Z1, plus 1 over the impedance of the second, plus 1 over the impedance of the third, and so forth, depending on how many we're wiring together in parallel. Well, let's use our little calculator and let's write this out a little differently and make this easier. So the impedance total equals 1 divided by 1 divided by the impedance of the first, in this case 16 ohms, plus 1 divided by the impedance of the second one, 8 ohms, plus 1 divided by the impedance of the third one, in this case that was going to be 4 ohms. All right, so I need to complete everything on the bottom here first before I do 1 divided by. And if we follow PEMDAS, it's going to do the division, 1 divided by 16, 1 divided by 8, 1 divided by 4, before it does the addition. So now I can put this into my calculator, and let's see what we get. 
So 1 divided by, open up the paren, 1 divided by 16 plus 1 divided by 8 plus 1 divided by 4, close the paren, and then hit enter. It tells us the impedance total, if we were to wire this up, 2.2857 and so forth. So just something a little bit above 2 ohms. One of the double checks here that will tell you you're headed in the right direction, the result here that I had, a little over 2 ohms. What you find when you do a parallel combination like this is whatever result you get is going to be less than the lowest impedance on the line. In this particular case, the lowest impedance I had on the line was 4 ohms, so I would know that the expecting result after I calculate this would be something less than 4 ohms, and indeed that's the case. So that's how we would do that. This also works for 70 and 100 volt lines. So for example, earlier in one of our other videos, we did the impedance equals voltage squared over power. And let's say this is on a 70 volt line, so 70 squared, and I have a loudspeaker tapped at 7.5 watts. What's the impedance of that loudspeaker? 70 squared divided by 7.5, 653 ohms approximately. Now remember, we're really not calculating for impedance here, but this will get us in the ballpark. So the impedance of one of those loudspeakers, 653. Let's say I have 10 loudspeakers, and they're all tapped at 7.5 watts. Well, they would all have the same resulting impedance. Okay, so impedance total, the impedance of one of the loudspeakers, 653. How many am I wiring together? I mentioned 10. So here, the resulting impedance on the line, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 65 ohms worth of impedance. And that's something I can test the line with an impedance meter before I ever connect it to the power amplifier. So that's just a little bit on some of the impedance calculations for loudspeakers.